Anna here. Kelly here. We are Speaker Insight, where we help speakers, authors, and coaches to build a business on your terms. Uh, now, you may notice if you are a regular watching person that we are in a slightly different place. Um, <laughs> the issue is a Wookiee in the freezer. Um, <laughs> that is basically what we've decided is going on. The freezer is making weird, weird noises. Yeah. So we have removed ourselves to the office office which is really quite spectacular so you'll have to kind of put up with uh, not looking at us and looking at other things and just getting kind of a little bit uh, excited about Even the fact that we're in a different place the bright sunshine outside i know we've had to shut it out <laughs> it's like damn already so we hope that you're enjoying the sunshine and that you maybe might be sitting on a park bench watching us in some way <laughs> who knows um now we always start with the buzz in our business and we would of course love to know what the buzz is in your business yeah. so as you're arriving or even if you're doing kind of hashtag replay, do do a hashtag replay. Um, but as you're arriving, tell us what the buzz is in your business. You know, what's interesting, exciting? What should your clients or prospects know about that you're up to, yeah. right? Um, so for us, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of buzz inside the Connection Hub, which is if you're not in there, Kelly's probably I'm already... I'm the links as we, as we speak. There we go. Um, and the Connection Hub is really where all of the conversations happen. And sometimes we like to actually stimulate that conversation, particularly in anticipation of our Connect and Create event. Um, so we actually have a competition going on in there at the moment called Hashtag My Light Bulb Moment. Um, and this one's focused all around the authors. It's all around actually kind of saying what are the tips and tricks that you as an author have actually done to get your book out there, to get your book written, to get your book something. Um, <laughs> and there are some magical bits of uh, nuggets, gold dust. gold dust, like real gold dust. So if you are in the Connection Hub and you want to have a look at those, if you do in the little search bar on the left hand side, if you do a hashtag my light bulb moment, you will actually see all of all the, the posts that are actually kind of in there. And seriously, it is well worth a scroll through. Kind of make yourself a cup of tea job and and go and have a good look at them. People so, sharing how they've got to bestseller status, yeah. how they wrote their book, um, how they actually got it published. You know, all things that you, lots of people are saying, I'm really glad I know this now before yeah. I've started to write my book. That's exactly it. And so there, there are just, I mean, there are some gems in there, seriously, some gems that are rereading uh, worthy as well. So a Amy's buzz is that her podcast interview is posted this morning. <laughs> Congratulations. And I actually saw something in the Connection Hub saying it was so good. Um, so, so it's, you know, this is exactly what we mean. So there's a celebration kind of happening that is actually going on. So do tell us more about your buzz. And uh, the other thing is that um, the Connect and Create Day is coming up on the 13th of March. Bar the winner, <laughs> we still have one space left on it. So if you actually want to meet in person some of the people who are in the Connection Hub, some of the speakers, authors and coaches that you might like to collaborate with or just connect with, get a different perspective from, that would be the day on which to do it. And you get a 20 minute session with coaching us. with us, which is really very good. Um, so anyway, um, I have to tell them. Oh, you I'm have really to. excited. <laughs> I've got a new desk, and it's <laughs> and it's so cool. And I know that, like you know, sort of like because here's the thing: when we're working for ourselves and working on our own, there are tiny little things that actually make a difference in our world. I've just gotten myself a standing, an automated kind of standing sitting desk that I can raise and stand at, or I can just on. sit, I can actually write on it. And that's wipe actually on, wipe my off, favorite you know. thing. It is a little wax on, wipe, wipe. <laughs> It is. Um, so, so uh, you know, that's actually exciting me. And the thing about that is we need to be excited about our businesses. So we're just inviting you to be excited about that. And I'm going to segue that into what we're talking about because I get excited about events. But you is there anything just, else? Yeah, Stephanie's buzz in her business. Yes, please. I, I knew about this. That she's, She basically, we put a, a, well, I think Christine put a post out in the Connection Hub about, asking for speakers for one of the fuck up nights yes and nice. stephanie contacted the person and she is doing her talk this week congratulations she's going to be doing her interview series talking talking about how 
her biggest failures. So again, yeah. it's a great it's, way for her to yeah. get out there. Especially because her whole kind of subject matter is explore your dark side. Yeah. So it just kind of makes sense. And, and that's the thing. Hashtag opportunity is another little one that you can actually have a good look at in there because there's always something going on somewhere. Someone wanting an interviewee for something, etc. Speak on someone's stages, co-author books. Yeah. People are putting opportunities in the Connection Hub all the time. So Which is really good. always search for that hashtag. Yeah. So on to today's little bit of training. So get your pens out if you haven't got them already. If this is your first time, strap in because this is going to be a good one because this one is all around how to run successful events. So bearing in mind that um, Kelly and I have a massive experience within that, we had to really kind of hone ourselves for this one. Yeah, that's what we um, do. So what we do want to know is, is are you already running an event? Who, 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 and again, if you're doing it on the replay, also answer this because we really like to know what kind of events are they? What, you know, how are you looking to use events if you're planning to use events? And if you are, then you're definitely in the right place. Yeah. And just, just type yes in the comments if you've yeah. run an event before or you're thinking of writing an event, running an event yeah. in the future so that we know how to gear this towards you. Yeah, because, so here's the thing. Running an event is actually, for speakers, authors and coaches, almost bread and butter in some way, depending on what kind of event it actually is. You know, it, it, it could be you running a workshop where you're actually helping people explore your methodology. It could be the book launch that you're actually organizing in, in anticipation of getting it out into the world. It could actually just be you organizing a multi-speaker event that allows you to showcase yourself or that allows you to MC something. All of these are ways for you to actually really build up your reputation, your credibility, and indeed just expose yourself to everybody that needs to actually know you to get the reach up there. And, you know, for your own sanity and return on investment to actually just check that your stuff is going out in the world, yeah, which is really, really good. So. The thing about this is this live is really geared at you deciding or helping you to decide what kind of event do you actually want to run? What role do you want to play within that event? Because those two things are actually really important. Um, for some of you, there's going to be a whole starring role. For us, we love the organization and the structure behind it. Mm, no go shit, figure. Sherlock. I know. I, I was going to go there and then I thought, oh, that might be a bit rude. But <laughs> off she went, uh, which is really rather good. But the whole point about this is, is you want to do what it takes to make it a, a, a successful one. So we've got some considerations for you and we've got some reasons why you might actually do it. Yeah. So, And Amy's saying that obviously she's run events before and it takes a lot of work putting them together to make them a smash so hell and that, yes and that's what helena was alluding to right we know speakers authors and, and coaches are creatives yes so the planning the organization the detail the structure isn't something that you guys normally like no that's why we encourage you to hang on till the end of this live because we've got a little treat for you little present <laughs> little present it might be a little downloaded from the brains of structure land <laughs> Anyway, I, I really am excited about my desk and it's being channeled into all sorts of things. Right, off you go. So, we always start all of our lives, especially when we're talking about product creation and things, is about going to the why. So you've got to think about, events are great for people because, uh, well, I'll go through some of the reasons why they might be good for you, mm. but they have to be on your terms, okay? Yeah. So we have to be thinking about where does the event fit in your product funnel? Yeah. And is it your style? Is it something you like to actually have the responsibility of, of delivering to 50 to 500 to 1,000 people Eek. and the organization and the structure and the time management, all that stuff? Or is it something that actually you don't want to do ever again and you just want to build digital products, right? So we need to think, does it fit into your funnel? Because not everybody has to run an event to have a successful business. Yeah, and does it fit with your style? So style and product funnel, where does this event fit? Yeah. So let's just discuss a little bit about why events might be a good thing for you to do as a speaker, author or coach. I think the first thing that a lot of people say to me, especially the coaches out mm. there, is that actually when they're in front of their avatar, they convert. Yes. Okay. So I've got people that have got ridiculous conversion uh, rates from stages, or even when they're doing small networking event, they say, if you can get me in front of my avatar, my closing rate is like one in two. Exactly. So therefore, it pays for them to show up and be physical with their avatar and their audience. Yeah. So that. So therefore, 
what you might want to do is that the event might be a way of actually onboarding your avatar an early stage of the journey. Mm -hmm. So they get to know you, they get to know your style, they get a feel for you. So we've got a couple of hub members uh, like Gary King and mm -hmm. Mike and Claire all from Business Squad. Yeah. They run a boot camp as a really early stage event in their product funnel. And that, you know, it's only got like 60 to 100 people in the audience, but they get a whole day of exploring what it's like to work with those guys. And then from there onwards, there's digital products and workshops and much more expensive things. Yeah. But I think it's only about 50 quid a ticket. So they're actually using events as a way of actually saying, look, come and get a feel for us. Yeah. And our conversion ratio is awesome. Yeah. So therefore, it takes, it's, it's the ROI for us works yeah. to spend a day out with 60 to 100 people to get them onto our next products. Yeah. So sometimes an event is not just about making money in that moment. Yeah, we're going to cover that. And, and you know, <laughs> so, so just be aware of that. So the next thing might be, it might be that when we, you know, in, in our Changemaker Central program, mm. we do encourage people to build digital products because it allows you to scale. Now, when some people have actually built a whole portfolio of membership sites and online courses and apps and blah, 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 yeah. they go, I really miss the interaction <gasps> of Completely. the people. I really want to be in front and actually talk to my, my, my avatar, yeah. even though I don't want to spend a, a coaching career where I've got six months worth of coaching afterwards. That's right. That can be done by the digital products. Yeah. So an event could be something you do quarterly or biannually, yeah. and that way it gives you still your... Um, yeah your foot in the door, yeah, you're still keeping right. your ear to the ground, you're still having that buzz of people interaction that sometimes if you've built a business just on digital products, yeah. sometimes you might miss that. Yeah, and, and you might just kind of get lonely. But here's the thing, if and this is what we always encourage, have the digital products in place so you have a choice about how many events you have to do. Right. Don't build an event-based business if it's not suiting your style, yeah, right? definitely. So you've also got the fact of when you actually run your own events, you can take them to different parts of the country or even to parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So many people in the Connection Hub know our speaker pre uh, presenter, Andrew Eggleton, mm -hmm. and he's currently about to take his workshop on tour. Yeah. So he's coming to England. He's, uh, God, he's going yeah. all around he's, the world. He, he likes a global yeah. tour. <laughs> so he's taking his workshop. So that actually allows his business to allow him to travel. Yeah. And reach more people yeah. but obviously there's a lot of organization that goes into that a lot but that could be another reason why you want to run your own events so you can actually start becoming a bit international yeah the or other... it might just be that you like traveling so you build Mixed your use, business yeah. around you because that's what we always say so you know what is it that you love and desire well how could you actually design that business now you might think that all these events that we're talking about, workshops and seminars and summits and things, hmm. we actually decided to create our own event, which is the Connect and Create Day that Helena was talking about earlier. Yeah. And that's actually more focused on how our clients get chance to spend time with each other yeah. and network and actually build more stronger relationships. Yeah. Yes, they, you get to work on your project during the day and you get some coaching by us, mm. but predominantly that session is actually who's in the room, yeah. who can you build joint it's, venture relationships yeah. with. It's so, facilitated yeah. collaboration and networking, Definitely. really. So, so you might want to do an event which is actually more of a networking yeah. uh, association rather than you actually teaching and delivering. Yeah. So it's a way of actually engaging. The other way is when you're on stage mm -hmm. at an event, you can engage with a lot of people. So it's a one-to-many model. Yeah. So therefore, if you actually want to get a real, like, the reach is high and you want to get a big mm -hmm. impact then actually doing events and speaking on large stages is a way of actually um, reaching more people in one go. Yeah. And then the final thing is the publicity that you can get from running your own events. Okay. Because basically it raises your profile. If people know that you, you're the founder of this event or you're, you're involved in this event, then again, it's a status thing. Mm. But it's a great way to help position you yeah. to say where you've spoken or what you've been involved in organising. Yeah. And it's an awesome place to get live testimonials. Yeah. When people have been to the event and they're in the buzz of the moment and they're saying, oh my God, I saw her on stage or I went to this event and this is what she helped me with. You could get that filmed and it's a great place to do it, which is exactly what I said to Stephanie when mm. she said she had this gig coming up this yeah. week. I'm like, see if we can get some in live testimonials of, of the impact yeah. of your story on stage. And for some of you, that might also be a show reel kind of moment yeah. where, of course, you know, if you get yourself filmed whilst you're actually doing it, it helps others to book you subsequently. Definitely. So there's also something there about it. We always it. talk about how to build your speaker show. Or there's a, a recorded uh, 
training on yeah. it in the hub but we say look go and go and speak for free potentially yeah. to get some footage of you on stage but that includes you running your own events exactly right? so because then your you're own really in control of it and you know exactly what you want to say and you're gearing it up in that way so let's just give you a little checklist if you're thinking yeah. about okay maybe i might do an event a one-off or it might be a consistent product for me mm. let's give you a bit of a choice of what type of events to choose from yeah so you've got workshops which are pretty much self-explanatory. Mm-hmm. Most workshops are relatively small, though. Small, I'd probably say yeah. they're at least under 50 people. Yeah, about that. Then you've got taster sessions. So it could be mm. where, um, it could be like, a bit like those boot camps that I said that the business squad run, where they're actually, they're, they're going there and working on some things, but they're actually getting more of a feel for what it's like to work with you going uh, forward. So they'll get a result from the day, but they won't solve all of their problems. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the ones where you're heavily teaching. So the seminars, the summits, the conferences, where you're doing sort of a keynote style presentation, 45 minutes to an hour long sort of style of delivering really high value information. You might be attending trade shows. They're a great event to be part of, whether it's the fact that you've got an exhibition stand or whether it's the fact that you've got a speaking slot in the exhibition um, show itself. You can run your own retreats. Yes. So we run our speaker insight retreat. Yep. So we take people away on a residential and we cater for them and we do all of the accommodation as well as have a real deep dive three days. I know mm. uh, Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie's yeah. look and see who's, I can't see who's on at the moment, yeah. but I know Stephanie's comments, so she was on our last one. But it could be the fact that you even take people abroad, mm. right? So some of the people we've worked Woo-hoo! with have taken people away to a different country for a week. So I, I think I'm on yeah. uh, Gary King's delivering part of his retreat next week somewhere nice. gorgeous yeah nice <laughs> anyway nice. um you've got client appreciation events so helena you used to yeah. do quite a lot of these didn't yeah you? i really did and and so client appreciation events are actually for your it's almost like you share your who's in your little black book together with each other yeah. so you're inviting them along for no other reason than to say you guys are awesome and you're doing amazing and here's what's actually happening yeah. so it's literally a way for you to Yes, update people, but simply to show your appreciation for them being around. Yeah, so exclusive events yeah. for your top level clients yeah. normally, where you actually thank you, thank and them. And you might get somebody in. You might get somebody in really special that they would all appreciate mm-hmm. in that way, or it might actually simply be a networking type event. The purpose of it is really simply for you to be able to say thank you in a way that's best suited to your client base. Yeah. So you just mentioned networking events and we mentioned that earlier with our Connect and Create. So yeah. that's something you might want to run yourself. Yeah. You've got team, team building events. Mm. So this could be that actually you're part of a corporate's team building event if that's one of the, the aspects that you've got, one of the categories that you train on. Yeah. Or it could be you manage your own team, yes. right? So you might actually want to do some team aware uh, away days to build up the culture and the values and the relationship, especially if you're bringing on new team members to who you've got. And I was talking to Amanda earlier and her team that seems to be growing and growing about who she's working with. It's really quite amazing. So sometimes those team days are actually quite good to just for your own team. And and if anything, particularly if you've got a lot of, as we tend to do, virtual teams, remote teams in some way, it's a great thing to get them all together so that they learn new levels of each other's personality. Mm -hmm. There's something really magical about what happens once people have met each other. There's just a different level of working that happens. It's deepening. So you've also got um, product and book launches. I know lots of people in the hub are doing book launches at the Mm. moment. So that's actually an event in itself, which is more of a one-off. Yeah. But then there might be a physical event to do that as well as an online launch. Yeah. And then the final one is awards. So again, if you're like a game-changing person in your industry, so we've got Kezia's Mm -hmm. um, Women of Contribution uh, event coming up in March. On the 8th of March, yeah, yeah, for International Women's Day. And so I'm sure... Later on, I'm just putting this out there, yeah. Kazia. But it's the fact that I'm yeah. sure she'll end up having her own international women's awards, yeah. right, at some stage. And if you weren't, you now are. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tag Kazia in here. Yeah, I know. Oh my it's god, like, I've got what? so much on my plate. <laughs> but anyway, so you might be actually doing your a new industry standard for something, and you yeah. might actually start be doing your own awards. Yeah. We have our little awards at our Christmas we party. We do, we do. It's good, it's good. But there's always an eye on what else is possible, what else is kind of showing up that yeah. we might want to do. So have a think about the why. Is 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 the, an event something that gives you something in yeah. some way or another like we just discussed? Yeah. And if you think, yeah, okay, I might do a one-off or actually I think I'm going to have it as a consistent product in my funnel, yeah. then start going through those lists that we just did and go, which one suits you best from yeah. your style, your outcome, your avatar, yeah. um, and, and the amount of time that it needs to, 
to do to actually put that event together. Yeah. So we're going to go into detail now about about those types it, of things yeah. <laughs> and and kind of you know sort of so so you'll you'll hear that what we've got here is a high level overview of the stuff that you need to do before you even start to do the event if that makes sense <laughs> because <laughs> there is a whole bunch of stuff that goes on the first thing really is actually deciding once you've decided you want to do an event then looking at what role do you really want to play because each event takes a, a degree of participation mm -hmm. organization skills which you may or may not have so you need to start deciding okay am I the event manager for this the coordinator for this am I the starring role only and if so what does that mean for me actually organizing my event um, so, so I want you to really kind of pay attention to that. Is it a, I just want to rock up and actually do my thing? Or is it more about actually, I want to have complete control over what happens because I have an intention for it. And so that's where we're always going to start you, which is what is going to make this a successful event so so there are two kind of sides of this and i'm always going to say this with the intentional kind of hats on um first of all you have to decide what will make it a success for you because success is it's like that good old subjective question of what is success mm -hmm. it's like don't go by somebody else's criteria use your criteria for what will make this a success for me what do i want it to do for me for my business in this way and then work out what will make it a success for the attendees that you're actually wanting? Because you might have a different audience, like we were just saying. Um, uh, it could well be the current clients that you have. It could well be people who haven't experienced you, but you would love to experience you. That's going to be, that's going to impact on the content, on the delivery, on the style, on the type of it. So you need to know these things first. And of course, you know, it wouldn't be us if we didn't mention this, but it does depend on your avatar. <laughs> and there it is, because why wouldn't you? So, you know, and, and then once you have decided that, you want to go to the stage where you go, okay, well, how will I create an event that people will rave about? Because if you're going to go through all of this effort, and trust me, it is a lot of effort um, and planning and mm. thinking, then you want to make it so spectacular that it actually pays for itself, not necessarily only financially, but in terms of the reputation that you build and the raving that people actually do about it around this was just phenomenal and amazing. But the energy that you put into it, right? That's right. I, I know that guys that have been on our retreat know that actually I yeah. I never wanted to do events because it's not actually it doesn't excite me and it actually drains me <laughs> but the fact that when we did our first retreat as a test yeah and that's what Helena just said what people got from it and the feedback was like oh my god we can't not run this again that's right and but we still run it in a way where it doesn't drain my energy as, an, as an we introvert. run it on our terms yeah. so we actually took a step back and went okay well what does that mean for how we organize and plan the event yeah. and that's actually really what I what, what I want to sort of highlight here is you will have some criteria for what makes your event a successful one um, and before I say that I guess I'll, I'll say this there are kind of three core stages of the event in and of itself so just because we were sort of talking about this when we knew we needed to do it again mm -hmm. there is a planning stage which is all the before during and after if you think about it like that so if you're taking notes before during and after in the before bits you're really looking at developing that content the promo that you might do the organizing that you might do what I would label planning so all of that comes before the event happens during the event, actually, you're going to be reliant on the systems that you have in place for running the day successfully. So that's all about the resources, the team, the timing of it, what actually happens, you guiding it so that it is an experience that people will remember and again, rave about in that way. And the bit that a lot of people kind of forget almost is it's phew the event's done great wonderful no stop there it's so not done if anything for me it just, just begins again. here you know <laughs> because the after kind of bits is all about the follow-up it's all about the thank yous the upsells it's all about the following up with people ensuring that they got the most out of it what else is possible those types Feedback, of things yeah. and so so I want you to hold that in your space when you're thinking about what do I want in terms of success? What are all of those three kind of stages? So here are some criteria that you might think about at a top level, and then we'll go into detail on some of them because some of them deserve exploration. So 
The first thing is, is what do you want it to do for you financially? We would always insist that it absolutely covers its face, you know, that it, it has some, you know, that you're not losing money. And some of that is about actually ensuring that you're choosing the right venue, you're choosing the right things, you're, you've got the programs in place that you're gonna upsell to, those types of things. So financially, are you actually going to make it work for you? And what does that mean for you in terms of success? The other thing is this raving fans kind of element of it. So, so you know, are you gonna meet, and in our case, you know, hopefully, exceed we would want you to exceed or over deliver in some way the needs of your learners your participants your attendees are they act what are you going to do content wise delivery wise experience wise to actually make them just go wow over deliver that's amazing yeah. um so that might be some of the criteria for success for you you know it might actually be that you're hearing inside your your head wow okay how do you create that that's that's kind of what we're asking here the the other thing might well be uh you might have an intention to actually get the media attention you might actually have an intention to really ha run such an amazing event that people write about it speak about it interview you do something with it so that it demands attention of the media whatever that means for you and the event might be a springboard yeah to something else right is that positioning piece for you exactly and then you know, it could actually be back to those kind of taster evenings or, or um, some kind of credibility build, building. It might well be that you are simply building up your credibility back to the show reel that mm -hmm. we just actually mentioned. Or it might be that you want to build or strengthen some relationships, um, whether that is relationships again with your partners, whether it's relationships with your clients or prospective clients. There's There's got to be an intentionality in there. So what do you want? The big question here is, what do you want this event to do for you? And what do you want this event to do for um, the participants? Yeah. So let's go into detail. I know there's, they're the main things we want to consider, but there are some key points that we always get questions around. Mm -hmm. One of the big ones always being the finances. So Helena said, you know, this is the thing you need to consider. And we get asked the question, how much should I be selling my tickets for? And all those <laughs> types of things. There is not a cookie cutter approach. Truly. To it depends on the size of the event, the venue costs, we want you to map out a big P&L beforehand. Yeah. So you need to know all of your costs before you can then say, okay, this is how many tickets, the, the sale of the tickets need to be and how many ticket sales we need to meet yeah. in order to, at level, break even. Yes. So this again depends on the why of your event. If you're doing an event because you want it to be that early stage uh, touch point for somebody to then upsell them onto the main journey because you've basically got them on board, they love your style, they love your content, and they want to do the whole journey with you, yeah. then most of the time those one day events would normally just break even. Yeah. Because so you want to know what cost it is for the people to go £49 for a day ticket. That's a no brainer. No -brainer. But you've also got to make sure that that £49 covers your <laughs> costs of AV, catering, venue hire, your, this is what people don't put in, Yeah. the cost of you yes. being out for the day. Hello. Right, so your day <laughs> rates need to be on yeah. that P&L sheet. Because if you weren't actually doing the event, what could you be earning? What could you be doing that would actually kind of be in there? So yeah. you must factor Always yourself in. Always have to in. put yourself into the costs. Yeah. So once you know your P&L, then you can actually go, okay, so what's the purpose of this event? If it's the fact that you're just doing it biannually and you actually want to do it as more of a conference, yeah. then you wouldn't want that event to wash its face. Yeah. You want it to be a product in its own right. Yes. But what we need to do is we need to understand the purpose of the event in your product funnel mm -hmm. to know what we need to charge. Yeah. And then we need to match it to, is that what the avatar is willing to pay? What the industry standards are doing, SWOT analysis and all those types of things. Yeah. But you should never make a loss no. on your events right so never never do it where they're actually costing you yeah never do it just because it might be fun to do and unless you've got some <laughs> real good stats and conversion ratios where you know your conversion yeah. ratios from selling from stage and then you can actually take yeah. that risk but it, but in effect that's actually a calculated risk that has the P&L in consideration but most people, but most people yeah. can't rely on that yet because most people don't know what their conversions are so, or they haven't had that experience so for financial consideration we always want you to reverse engineer it back yes. so do your costs work it out and then do the ticket price and the how many people in the room on reverse engineering that backwards yeah the other thing that people often don't take the time to do is obviously the marketing thing 
Mm. They spend all the time about what it's going to look like and doing, you know, the banners and writing their keynotes and thinking <laughs> of the speakers that are going to be involved and all that. But they forget to tell anyone about it. And often we get people going, what's the length of time that I should be waiting <sighs> to promote a product? Because I've got an event in two weeks and I haven't really told anyone about it yet. We so, want to throttle people like that. We'll put the, I'll, I'll put the Gently. link actually in here because I'm not going to go into detail yeah. about um, how to launch a product. I'll yeah. just put the link in the comments um, to a Facebook Live called How to Launch a Product. Yeah. And that will t- take you through actually what you need to be doing marketing. Yeah. But in that, in that teach and what we say is that averagely for most events, you need at least three, three months. months worth of marketing beforehand yeah. to actually warm people up, to educate and advise, to get them to convert, to do an early bird, yeah. to make sure you, you're doing lots of promotion on different platforms that they hang out on. Yeah. And just to make it easy on yourself and less stressful, right? Yeah. So we, we really want you to make sure that you take the time to, to <laughs> actually do the marketing. And the main question from this slide, if, you, if you're doing a, 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 an event yourself coming up, yeah. is just to think about how are you reaching your avatar, mm. okay? So what's the channels, what's the mediums, what's the methodology? Yeah. Are you having affiliates? Are you having people out there that maybe you're going to do a little Facebook Live with and they're at the end of giving some value on that Facebook Live, you're going to say, yeah. here's the, the link to the tickets? Yeah. Are you going to be doing webinars where you're teaching people about a little bit about the subjects and then doing a discount because they're on the webinar to come to the event? Yeah. Are you doing Facebook Lives? Facebook. Are you blogging? Yeah. Facebook you, ads? Are you actually going to put some marketing spend in yeah. there? All the, and, and how are you engaging with your existing email database yes. to tell them about the event? So first of all, I just want you to think about maybe two or three methodologies mm-hmm. that you're going to use as marketing strategies. Yeah to know where your avatars, what platforms or resources or places they're hanging out and to go and target them. Which of course then kind of, again, we come right back to the start, which is who is it for? Yeah. It's, there's, you know, that's Always one of your core, core, core right? questions, right? And, and it could be also that you, as Helena said, you might do some advertisement, but if you are doing this, going right back to the beginning of the live for a publicity thing, yes. then you need to get the media on board way in, way advance. in advance. Like, you know, the way that magazines come out, they're like three, four magazines yep. already written before yep. you can even get the editorial in. It, it, so, you yeah. know, are you doing a, a pre one to actually get people to come to the event or are you doing a post one as a follow-up to say this is the impact that this event had and it could actually be that this impacts on the timing of your event so for example one of the people that i've been working with around a particular book launch uh, they're actually now not going to publish the book and launch the book until august because that will get this particular book in the market for the Christmas period. Yeah. So it's, it, again, that intentionality and thinking through the ramifications. An event is not just an event. Yeah. It has ramifications and kind of build-ons afterwards. And, and um, I think we're, we're part of um, Joe Wilson's and Andy Andy's yeah. event coming up yeah. soon. I think it's next April. month. April. And I've seen Joe and Andy do Facebook Lives with some of their speakers. Yeah. So you've got Janie did one and um, uh, Mary Carl Louise one. is Mary doing Louise. one on Thursday. So that might be another strategy that if you've got guest speakers, you actually might want to do some promo and some Facebook Lives with the speaker to talk yeah. about what they're going to be doing at your event. But you need all of this time yeah. to plan. And also because some of the people, especially if you've got spe- a multi-speaker event, they may have a marketing schedule that doesn't fit in yeah. your promo. So you want to do it early enough so that you can actually book your slot, so to speak, yeah. right? Yeah. So what we're saying about the marketing, that, that, that Facebook Live that I've put the link to in the comments will give you a bit more of an understanding of what to do. But just think about who is your avatar, hmm. What methodology are you going to use to actually reach them yeah. and give yourself enough time to plan because you don't want to have that whole spammy where you're just talking about the event all the time on your social <laughs> and there's no value yeah. because people just go, oh God, I'm going to switch off because all they're talking about is this one thing. Yeah. I used to love the fact that they'd give me advice all week long, but now it's just sell, sell, sell. Exactly. So, so you don't want to be one of those people. And also, isn't it great to sell the event out way before the due date right? so less stress but it's so less stress for you but it's great marketing because people yeah. go next time she's going to run that event i need to get in quick my my favorite two words i have to say are waiting list <laughs> <laughs> that makes me so happy and um, by the way i always when i when i'm organizing for an event or when i'm helping other people do that i create the waiting list so if let's say you've got 30 spots we always do 40 spots in a different color yeah. so that those are the waiting list people yeah. i will plan to have a waiting list quite happily 
And, and so what we've got to think about is that also, we'll talk about this at the end of our little goodie that Yay. we've got for you, but is um, how are you actually going to do the logistics of actually taking tickets and, and managing yeah. that, like having those extra 10 tickets for waiting lists? Yeah. So we use Ticket Tailor for a lot of our events, but we, you know, lots of people use Eventbrite. But a lot, what we also hear is, oh, I've got an Eventbrite page. And you're like, well, yeah, but you need to what else? market the Eventbrite page. <laughs> people aren't just going to go and find it. Yeah. So that's the way we're talking about this active marketing. You need to be directing people to go to that page. Yeah. And just because you've got an Eventbrite page doesn't mean you can't create a Facebook event that drives people through to where to buy the tickets. Yeah. So think about it in that way. Again, where does your avatar for this event hang out? Yeah. Is this the most appropriate use of it? And when we do our Connect and Create days and our retreats and all those types of things, that's why we do a Facebook event so other people can go, oh, well, that person's going. Yeah. Oh, I definitely want to go because I haven't caught up with them for ages. Exactly. In an event, right, you can't always see the guest list or the ticket tailor. So yeah. you've got to think about how people, or how do you yes. buy tickets to events? What yes. makes you decide to go to an event and not another? And, and think about your avatar if you are your own avatar. Yeah. Completely. Uh, so, uh, so I'm going to have to rein this in, and I, I am probably, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my I'll best. Rein you in. So, delivering or managing your event. So, let's say that you have actually decided you're going to do the event. You're actually thinking about, uh, you know, sort of like all the things that need to happen. You've decided to actually be the event manager of it. The first things first is. Find the right venue. I cannot stress this enough. Find the right venue for the type of event. If you've got loads of people, what's the parking scenario? What are you know? What what does the avatar expect? Is it going to be plush, four star, five star, or is it like the ibis down the road or the school hall down the road? What's going to be appropriate for your event? I'll what have you got? I'll just put a link to the venue queen in the comments. Oh, so nice. So Claire is in the connection hub. But she runs a free part of that service is yeah. that she can do free venue finding for you. Which so is she's amazing. in the UK, but check her out yeah. um, and she's in the hub as well if you want to connect with her directly. Because but. because there's a whole bunch of stuff. And Claire, if you if you have got like a, you know, what kind of venue am I looking for type of thing, then please pop it in here because I cannot stress enough that the venue makes a difference to the perception yeah. of your event. Yeah. And so you want to have a link to what do you want people to rave about? And you definitely don't want them to love the event but hate the venue, right? So find the right venue for you. One of the reasons that we use at our retreat, that we use the place that we, we use, is because the staff are remarkable. And the food is great. Oh, my <laughs> God. And so, so those two things combined mean that we can simply focus on education yeah. and supporting yeah. in that way and you want to have somewhere that does does that so my other thing for that is always do a recce do not go sight unseen please 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 right i'm going to move on uh, okay good the other thing is create a running order so many people kind of almost wing it but you have to have and this is where we both get quite regimented and structured about this but Unless you have a timed running order, yeah. you do not know whether you're running out of time or giving too much time to one person and another. And the worst thing for a participant is actually sitting there going, I really want to go to the loo. Yeah. And, and they said they said that we'd have a break half an hour yeah. ago. And I'm sure some of you may well have been to something like that. So don't organize an event that doesn't actually care for people. The running order will help you do that. That's all I'm going to say about that. I could say a lot more. I could do a whole Facebook Good, Live on it. that. Uh, but I'm not going to. Um, so the other thing there is we've highlighted it already. Team. Now, the, the venue and the team at the venue are actually part of your external team yeah. because they're delivering that service. But actually, who do you need to have in the room? Who do you need to have on the reception desk? How many people do you actually need to have? Um, do you need mic runners? Exactly. You know, it might be volunteers. A lot of people have crew yes. that are volunteers who are actually part of the raving fans that Helena said earlier yeah. that they actually want to be part of your event to you know absorb more information that they might have missed the first time round or see the behind the scenes of how you do it because they, they really respect what you do yeah. exactly in that way um it might also be that you've got sponsors you know so who's the team of sponsors that you actually have in there what's the catering scenario all of these are part of your team yeah. so what is the briefing that you actually need to do for those people so that they're all on board and everyone has the greatest care of the attendee in at the top of their minds right yeah. 
The other thing here is, is how are you branding this event? So I talked about the five star versus the school hall or whatever, but there's also something about, you know, how are you decking everything out? What What's the color? What are the banners? Well, how are you showcasing the information that you want to showcase? Is it high technology or is it low comfort. key kind of comfort and flip charts in some way? So again, what atmosphere are you creating at the event? And you do that through your branding so that people know that this is a you event or yeah. it's hosted by you. Even if you're doing the, uh, you know, when I when I go and speak at Authorcraft, the, the showcasing authors usually have their banners in the middle, yeah. but on the outsides of them, you've got the authorities.me kind of banner and you've got the Authorcraft banner because that's how it actually sits. So, so how are you indicating that this is your event, for example? So you want to be thinking about those things. The other thing, <laughs> I'm, about, I'm about to say this and then I'm like, yeah, okay, we might not have managed this in, in this particular little bit we of training. Like to put stuff that we're all aspiring yeah, to. That's right, that's right. You know, there's got to be one of those things. So don't overwhelm people <laughs> with the information that you're giving them or at least give them some breaks in there. Yes. Yeah. And I think, I'm, I'm, as I said, we're speaking at Joe and, and Andy's event soon, which yeah. is about how to run workshops. Yeah. And I think one of the things that people do badly when yeah. they're running their own events is actually give them too much information it's about what, what they need rather than what they want. Yeah. So they do more need than what, actually what they came there for. Yeah. But also, people just throw loads of stuff at them and don't give them any time to digest yeah. or do exercises to actually Land process it. that information. Yeah. So they go, okay, so this is a new concept, blah, 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 blah. You've got two minutes to write down your thoughts. No! And then that person is just like, I've got to find a pen. And mother yeah. found a pen, it's two minutes. <laughs> and so you're not, that. that's when people, when they walk away from many events, the information just stays as theory yeah. because they hadn't quite grasped how they could apply it to their personal situation. And theory gets lost and they forget you or, they, or worse, they might actually just go, well, that was a waste of my time because I don't remember anything. And, and that's I'm so glad we've got Stephanie yeah. on here because she goes, don't worry, we have an accountability program to catch up after it sank in. No. Which is true, Stephanie. Is. So we, or anyone that comes to our event, they get three months worth of membership afters to work with us. Yeah. So we do throw a lot of stuff at you. Yeah. So that with you, that knowledge with in hand, knowledge, we're going to hold your hand afterwards. But that's that whole planning piece around, OK, well, what's the follow up? Yeah. And it, remember I said that most Three people stages. forget the, the follow up and that's actually part of the follow up. So we know that we can do that because we've already got people's backs in there. And so it's all about you'll hear this time and time again from me. It's all about how much you care and what that care shows up like. So a couple of other things for you around managing your event are definitely, you know, what is the technical support structure? that you've got kind of in there, which partly Kelly's alluded to around taking money, for example, or buying the tickets, but also the AV that you need on the day. Have you got people that you can trust to actually do that? Yeah. Do you need it? What do you need? What do your speakers need? All of those types of considerations are in there. But there's also something around the documentation. So you've got the technical stuff, but you've also got the documentation. So, so you know, do you need workbooks or leaflets printed? And, and again, banners potentially, but just those things, the earlier you get it done, the earlier you have it planned, the easier it is, the less cost it is to actually get those <laughs> things done as well. So, you know, it's all around that whole how do you make it as easy and graceful for you to organize this? Because you don't want this to be the thing that takes over your business as usual. Because a lot of people will actually go, yeah, I'm gonna put on an event. And then suddenly everything else in their business falls apart because they're not actually planned it out and planned it out early enough to make room for everything else that usually happens. Yes, definitely. And, and that's why when you're working, especially at a multi-speaker event, yeah. if you're having a workbook to go with them and then suddenly they decide that they want to change their keynote title or <laughs> halfway through and you've ah! already created the workbook, that's where you've got to be really clear on deadlines for things and that's yeah. where the, the planning comes in. Yeah. I'm going to answer this question from yeah. Amy. So she said on the content overload, when it's a trade show type of an event where people right. are popping in for a few minutes to see what you have 
or do, what's the key to tell them? Just highlights in the brochure to take away. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna caveat your thing, Amy, because I'm yeah. not sure if you mean if you're on stage and they're just popping in or whether you've actually got an exhibition booth. I, I suspect she I means exhibition booth. booth. That's, that's what I thought. Okay. Uh, especially we'll given both. what she does. But, but do tell us yeah, and do, we can check confirm. it out, but do both. So if you were on stage <laughs> at an expo, normally you'd get like half an hour and you'd have like a small, normally if you've got a, on a larger stage, you'll have a couple of hundred people. If you're in a small room, you've got about 50 people. Mm. In, in those events, you want to be able to just solve one problem. So your keynote is yeah. not talking about what they need to know, it's what they want to know. Yeah. And you're literally just blowing them away with lots of real valuable insights, yeah. raising their awareness. But the point at the end of that keynote is to have some form of call to action where yeah. you bring them into your world. Yeah. So you basically either say, here, take my quiz or download this guide that tells you how to do this next or yeah. do this where all the people in the room will get a half an hour consultation with me. Yeah. And you can use something like a service like textlocal.com mm. where they can just text a five digit number to, to the phone and they automatically go into your CRM system. Yeah. So, and get the thing delivered yeah, that you're so, promising. So therefore you're capturing the people. Sometimes people say, give me your business card at the back of the room. Yeah. But if you can get some way of getting that audience into your world, then you can nurture them. Yeah. The question that I think you're asking is actually more about if you've got passing trade on an expo stand, yeah. what's the bit of advice to tell them rather than overloading Completely. them with content? And I think this is where we're going to do a, a Facebook Live about this this year. Yeah. But um, people have the wrong expectations about why they have a stand at an expo. Yes. And most people think that they're there to sell. No. Right? You are there for lead generation. Yeah. Because you need to know your conversion sales funnel really well to know that if you get 100 leads coming through and you do this certain follow-up process and nurture process, you're going to convert 50% onto this low-level product, yes. which is going to cost this amount. Now, it's £4,000 for a stand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end up getting £15,000 back from doing this lead generation. It works. Yeah. As long as you know your conversion numbers. Yeah. So the point of doing a stand and an expo is literally only to get them to opt in. Yes. Right? So you don't want to be telling them how long you've been in business and blah, blah, blah. You've got to have something that eye catches them yeah. when they walk past to go, oh my God, I've got that problem. Yeah. Like not, I'm a like, CRM accountant and da, 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 da. That's just what you do. Yeah. You've got to stop them in their tracks that they are literally bombarded with They are stimuli. overwhelmed. Like, you know, they, they, they kind of want to hide. Yeah. Like anyone who goes, goes with that whole, okay, good, I'm going to do this. And within half an hour, they're like tired. Yeah. So I would be doing lots of market research with your ideal avatar before you go to this trade show mm. to actually go, What's your number one problem at the moment? Now put a LinkedIn polls and Facebook yeah. polls and all that stuff up so you can actually get the wording and knowing what is the main problem for your avatar at this precise moment. Yeah. And that's what you want to create a lead gen around that basically you can help. And that's the wording yeah. as well as your brand for brand recognition. Yeah. But you want to have stuff there that they can actually go, I can help you with that problem right away. Do this, take this, and we'll follow up after the show. And some of that is going to come down to if you are at a show the nature of the show will bring in a certain type of avatar. That avatar will have a perspective on it. So you may actually tweak what you usually say and just come at it from that slightly different perspective. It's still solving the thing that your expertise solves, but the per, the the way in which you present it may be slightly different because of the nature of the avatar that's coming. So so again, if you're doing a trade show, know who's going to show up, what kinds of people are coming in, and that's part of that consideration right at the beginning. Do I say yes to this or no to this? Right? What does she say? You guys are brilliant. Oh, thanks. <laughs> that's the thing, right? If you're doing an expo, I would not just go. Oh, I want to book a stand and do. I want a five by four with a let. Yeah. I actually want to go to the event organizer. Go, Give me a profile breakdown of That's who right. was at the last event. I want to know male, female, how yeah. long they've been in business, what uh, what decision maker are they. So uh, that, that's what I would be grilling them. If yeah. I'm going to have a stand at your event, I want to know this information. Yeah. So therefore, booth event. Perfect. Yeah. Brilliant. Do that then, Amy. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so, so, so off. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. So I could actually kind of, you know, I'm trying to stick to my bit and suddenly she's gone off on her bit and, you know, you totally. We knew this was going to be a bad one. Right, so I'm going to say these last little bits for you about following up because the follow up, honestly, that's where you will land the actual running of the event. What, what Sorry, we... just Sarah. Sarah's just gone. She went to an expo last year looking for unusual venues and walked past a stand called Unusual Food Venue. 
is in the nice. head conversation. It's on nice. your radar, right? <laughs> That's complete. That is a beautiful example, Sarah. Thank you very much for sharing. So I'm going to kind of wrap this up with the follow-up is the key thing that you actually need to do the planning for. Following up means what emails, like actually preparing in advance the emails that you're going to send out to say to the, you know, maybe to the, to the vet, to the expo people, thank you so much for a brilliant event and, you know, planning in the communication that you're going to have with those people who put the business card in the fishbowl or, you know, kind of like who've actually downloaded your, your thing, your yeah. opt-in, because actually that's going to need an email sequence behind it. So have you already written those words? So we hope that actually we're beginning to help you see that by you thinking ahead and there you know therefore you know reverse engineering it back you can then actually prepare for all of those things so that it's not stressful it's simply a way of you following up yeah. the key thing that we always do is don't do anything the next day no or we the day after we do a review but, but we that's don't, fine we don't sit there and have client meetings because it's physically draining yeah. to run a three-day event right yeah. and be on and be delivering all the time you but, need that time to but, but 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 there's that or depending on what kind of event it is so you know that's certainly for our retreat or maybe even a workshop that you're doing but uh, you know if it's a bigger event in some way the work hasn't finished yeah, it may well be calls. that you've got exactly so you've got some of that going on so actually you need to budget in the energy yeah. for that yeah. or the team for that it may well be that you've got a team of people who are set you know uh, calling up people and yeah, following we've up done in that way where we've said okay if you want to do take the upsell yeah. you take you put a deposit down today and we'll, we'll you have to make the full deposit in the next 48 hours yeah. so obviously you need that team or yourself to be making those calls yeah completely but i also want to put in here the follow-up mm. isn't just about sales right no. the follow-up especially for us because we don't have a huge product line of, of yeah. is actually showing you that we care yes so we actually want to get your feedback on like you know, how did you find the event? What? Yeah. Can, how can we can help you next? What's going to be the next thing that moves you forward? Yeah. We have little gifts and treats for people that come onto some Shh, of our events. Don't tell them that. But it's that whole thing that okay, it's not you've been to the event and done <laughs> next. Yeah. It's not that sausage factory approach. No. We want to be in your lives forever, yeah, right? That's it. As long as you need us. That's it. So we want to make sure that we're always developing and learning. We care yeah. about the feedback and we care about what we can do to help you on the next step. And so, so, so it really is about saying, okay, well, how do I I maintain the reputation and the credibility that I probably gained at the event because I planned it well and therefore have executed it well. it well. So now, how do I maintain that yeah. impression so that people actually really go from impression to relationship? Because the follow-up is what's going to create the relationship with you. So you cannot underestimate the impact of it. So... For those of you that have hung on to the end, because well you were done. <laughs> um, what we've done is we've put a little link in the in the comments for you. We've put together uh, an event checklist for you yeah. on the three stages that we've just done this live on. Yeah. So the before, the during, and the after. Yeah. The the planning, the planning the systems, systems, and the follow up. Yeah. Right. So it's not an exhausted list at all, but it's the foundations. Because obviously it depends what type of event you're exactly. running what you need. Exactly. And who you are and yeah. who's running it, etc. But at least what it does is it outlines some timelines. So the three-month timeline that we were talk talking about with the ideal for, uh, for promoting an event and yeah. also organising an event. Yeah. What needs to happen when? And it's for you to actually just use this as a bit of a sanity check to go, yep, done that, done that. Oh, sugar, need ah! to do this before it's That's too it. late. And here's the thing. Don't just do, like, read the whole thing and then reverse engineer it back. So don't just, just go the, stop. oh, I'm in the before <laughs> stage. It's great, I can do that. So read the whole thing and then plan it your way. Yeah, so download that. I've put the link in the comments. If you're watching the replay, carry on asking any questions. Tell Please. us about your event. Um, and we'll look forward to yeah. hearing about hearing them. about yeah. it. Tell us some success yeah. stories. It, it, you know, sort of like every month we do a what's your offer. So we'd love to hear what actually comes up in terms of the invite to everybody if it's the right avatar, obviously. <laughs> so on that note, go uh, and enjoy the sunshine. Yes, we're about to. So many blessings. Have a great, See you. great day. Bye.